biggest influences on this rifle project is Midway USA's nearly perfect safari rifle. What I wished they would have done was go into the making of some of the tooling required to do the project. This piece right here is called a heat sink and we're also going to use it as a pilot for jeweling the bolt. It threads into the bolt and provides extra mass so when you go to weld on your bolt handle, put a new one on, uh, it'll absorb all that heat versus warping your uh, bolt body. I can also index it with uh, the 5C collet indexer when I go to jewel it also. So part three of this video series is going to be the making of this uh, heat sink. So what I'll do is I'll start out like I did before on paper and I'll see you afterwards. Enjoy the video. So what we're doing today is making a heat sink out of some brass. The gripping surface of the 5C collets is about three quarters of an inch. This is going to be threaded. I measured the thread pitch at 13 threads per inch and it's a half inch diameter. And then the remainder of this is going to be a little bit smaller. The biggest drill bit I could insert into the end of the bolt was a... Uh, what the heck was it? The biggest drill bit I could insert into the bolt was a 2764, which is a .422. So we're going to start at .428 and go from there. My main concern is having enough mass here to absorb any heat when I go to weld on the new bolt handle. So the depth of the thread I'm just gonna call this by ear. I'm gonna start at 750. That's about three-quarter coverage of all the threads. So I think three-quarters of an inch worth of thread should be just fine. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I got this piece of brass found it in a ditch somewhere. I, I really I don't I don't know where I got it from. When you uh, when you see brass being used as drifts uh, and it's mushroomed out like that, there's a tendency for this material to be cracked internally. So we don't want that. We're gonna put this on our heat sink end. We're gonna keep our threads over here where it's relatively uh, in very good shape. We are at 0.6 inches exactly, so got a hundred thou to go, 50 on each side. That's right on the money. I took off 20 off of each side and it's reading 560 now. For a Chinese lathe, that ain't bad at all. All right, so that's uh, that's a half inch right on the right on the money. What I need to do now is mark my three quarter or one and a half inch. This will be the part that goes in the 5C collet, and this will be my threaded area. That has to stay a half inch, so I can't touch that anymore. So this area needs to be brought down to 4, I think I said 428.
this is that stop I was telling you about. The only thing I don't like about it is the chips have a tendency to collect in the set screw here. This should be 440. And it is. So 440 minus um, 428 is uh, 12. So I'll go six thousandths in. It's still hitting the threads. We'll go two foul at a time. There we go. Perfect. Little tiny bit of slop, but the heat paste is going to take up all that slop. So, threads. So what I finished doing just now was uh, I inserted my thread cutting bit and I made a relief cut on the back side right at the three quarter inch mark where my first black line was. What I'm going to use that for is when I stop cutting threads, that's my resting point. I don't need to worry about dickering up any of the other stuff. But first I've got to change gears inside here. So there's a chart on the back side of this Chinese piece of crap and it tells me which gears need to go where. So for a 13 pitch thread I need a 40, 65, a 60, and a 30 going into uh, A, B, C, D. If you've ever used one of these Chinese lathes, you know how much of a pain in the ass it is to change gears just to cut threads. This took about 15 minutes. Uh, I sped up the video to spare you the agony of having to watch me switch all these gears out. So I got the, <laughs> I got the camera propped up on my light here, sort of precariously, haphazardly propped up so I can get a shot of this. Hopefully I'll have enough light on the subject. So I'm going to kiss the material back off and what I do is I have a dial over here that tells me when to engage. My chart tells me I can only engage it on number one. What I'll do is I'll set my depth, set it at one, and just turn the on button on. Bring it back to one. Set my depth. Get my dial. Hit go. That works out well. 30. I'm almost touching the surface of this at uh, was it 422, so I should be pretty darn close to the minor diameter. Ooh, that's almost. I'm actually rubbing right here, so I'm going to reduce the outside diameter just a hair. Oh well, you know what I'm going to do? Since I have a great start, I'm about 80%. I'm just going to take a die and run it down that bad boy. Yep. I want to keep that mass there as much as possible. If that means screwing around with this. If I have to run a die across there, I'm going to end up dickering up this, so I don't want to do that. God bless America. I knew I'd do that. Ooh, perfect. It only took me 50 tries. So now that is going to seat nicely. There's like eh, a tiny bit of play. So that'll seat nicely in there. I can goop the rest of this up on the inside with uh, heat paste. Now I need to turn it around and machine this end to clean that up a bit. I boogered up that a little bit, but nobody's going to know unless you tell them.
The advantage of having a tool like this is uh, I can also chuck it up in the lathe and measure the run out along the body before and after I weld just to make sure there's no, uh, uh, no warpage. Put the live center in the firing pin hole and it's, uh, it's centered. Good enough for me.